And finally tonight, the story of a small band of engineers and mechanics trying to change the cars we drive. Judy Woodruff has that report. In the heart of rural Virginia, Lynchburg is 600 miles from Detroit. But inside this converted textile plant, a handful of car enthusiasts are working on what they claim is a revolutionary new energy saving automobile, one that gets 100 miles per gallon. A leap in efficiency that's really a tripling or quadrupling. That's a pivotal moment. A real estate developer who has owned and driven race cars, Oliver Kuttner and his team didn't initially set out to change the cars we drive. They just wanted to win $5 million. Dangling a big carrot is what, what did it. It's the money. And once we started digging, we've learned a lot. And it's not the motivating force anymore. The goal for Kuttner's team, to win the Progressive Automotive X Prize, with the main focus to design and build a car that seats four passengers, gets the equivalent of 100 miles per gallon on average in all driving conditions, and can travel at least 200 miles without refueling. It is the latest in a series of X Prizes that aim to spur innovation by offering a lot of cash. The first X Prize was for a viable vehicle for commercial space flight. Currently, the national fuel average for new U.S. cars is 32 miles per gallon. By 2016, government rules will require 37.8 miles per gallon. Initially, we were convinced, like the rest of America, that it had to be an electric or hybrid solution. We think that the real efficiency must be from the efficiency of the car itself, as in the chassis and the, and the aerodynamics. And as such, we've taken a completely different approach. With the focus on electric power, Kuttner named his team Edison 2. But they quickly realized today's batteries were too heavy, even an impediment to reaching their goal. Racing veteran Ron Mathis is the team's chief designer. There's so much propaganda out there about uh, how wonderful these cars are. Um, as we began to do the numbers, we just began to see it differently. What, what happened? Um, we, uh, we looked at the facts, and uh, the facts told us that uh, very lightweight was one of the keys to, uh, to real automotive efficiency. So they came up with the very light car, which was just that very light. It weighs under 800 pounds compared to the average car now on the road, which is over two tons. Instead of batteries, their car is powered by an ethanol-based gasoline. Its diamond shape is meant to maximize aerodynamics and optimize fuel efficiency. We don't waste energy accelerating it and we don't waste energy keeping it at a cruising speed. Uh, it's because it's light and because it has such very low drag, it's just very easy to push. The fact that you can do that is what makes it efficient. But such a light weight raises safety concerns. Safety is certainly the biggest hurdle. Kuttner's team answers from a race car perspective. We used a lot of the technologies that you would expect in an Indy car or a Formula One car to protect the passengers in our car. By having the suspension inside the wheel, we create all this other distance to become impact absorbing structure. In a normal car, all that is taken up by rigid suspension parts. In our car, it essentially becomes a pillow. And this pillow is what saves you your life. Still on American highways with 40 ton trucks and SUVs hurtling at speeds over 60 miles an hour, the very light car looks very vulnerable. We want to maintain the, the, the safety of the vehicle, so you, you have a balance there with downsizing versus downweighting versus safety. So that's a real important balance that you have there. Mike Stanton is president and CEO of the International Automobile Manufacturers Association. When you're producing a, a vehicle for mass markets, there's some concerns that you have that you uh, might not have on a one-of-a-kind or two-of-a-kind vehicle. It's got to be affordable, but uh, you look at aerodynamics, which was a big part of it. You look at the light weighting. I think we're going to see some light weighting, continued light weighting in, in uh, the vehicles of tomorrow. The, the issue that we're going to have is to, we've got to maintain and improve safety as well. These are questions Kuttner lives with as he has grown his ambition from the X Prize to mass marketing an efficient car of the future. 
He believes the public is ready for change. We were willing to take a leap, jump to a completely different model of a car and let it walk before it can run. There's no doubt in my mind that when the General Motors of the world work on a car like that for 10 years, they're better cars than what you can buy today. Indeed, with its unusual shape and exterior wheels, the very light car looks very different from anything on the road now. How much of making a car is going in the direction of what consumers are used to, and how much of it is getting consumers to come in your direction in order to to make, frankly, a greener car, a more economical car? I, I think there's both. I think this can be built almost identical to what consumers are used to, but then you pay a price. You might get 70 miles per gallon or 80. Instead or you of can, 100. Instead of 100. Or you can build an extreme, ecologically friendly car, and you can probably get to 110 or 120. But that's the limit. So it's a new envelope. It's a new range. And we have the same thing today. You can buy a a Prius and get 50 miles per gallon, and you can buy a, a Chevy Suburban and get, uh, you know, 14. It's your choice, and people make that choice every day. With that in mind, Kuttner has focused on two other factors. First, cost. They want to sell the car for 15 to 20 thousand dollars. We always wanted to build a cheap car because the only car that can really make an impact on our world is a car that people can afford. I mean, our entire engine transmission unit costs less than most electric cars batteries by far. So, I mean, we, we can probably deliver an entire car for the price of some of these battery packs. And second, domestic production. The very light car has been entirely made in America, a fact the Kuttner team argues was crucial to their success. It's all very well having stuff made in China, but when it comes to making a prototype, you need it made just down the street because you need it like, you know, today, tomorrow, or at the latest next week. This is one of the reasons we're in Lynchburg, is that there, there is still a legacy of manufacturing industry here, and that enables us to do lots and lots of things. But first, Edison 2 has to win the X Prize, which they've chased all the way to the finals. 111 teams from 11 countries started out in January, and as the last stage is now underway, Kuttner's team is the only one left in the four-passenger category. Still, they'll have to continue to meet the prize requirements to win. Their very light car got the equivalent of 110 miles per gallon in the final track test last month in Michigan. And Edison, too, is confident they will prevail. I think we're with almost 100% certainty on that track. I, I, I think I can say that comfortably. What I can't tell you is if there are going to be, in 10 years, 4 million of these a year sold or or 40,000, but you can be sure that this idea is not going to be stillborn. It's, it's too good and it's too right and it works too well. For now, the very light car heads to a lab for its final evaluation. The X Prize will announce if Kuttner and company win in September.